Welcome to Where I Am version 8.1. Version 8.1 introduces a number of features and improvements that our customers have been asking for. So let's get right into it and go through some of the most important new features. One feature that all, almost everyone has been asking for is the ability of Where I Am to consume RESTful services without having to write a Java plugin. In the previous versions, developers could consume SOAP web services out of the box, but if your application needed to consume a RESTful service, you had to write a Java plugin. In version 8.1, you can now consume a RESTful service without having to write a plugin, even if a service requires complicated authentication using the OAuth protocol. All you have to do is define a business object representing the service provider and define the REST communication channel for this object. You can then specify details of the OAuth authentication if your server provider requires this and then define RESTful services by specifying the URL of the service, parameters and reply. In this video we will, we will not be going through the specifics of this process because there is a special video tutorial that explains this in great detail. Please watch this tutorial. Another important feature of version 8.1 is the tighter integration with Excel spreadsheets. This can be useful, for example, if users already have some Excel spreadsheets that perform some calculations. They need to read the data from the database, perform these calculations, and write the results back into the database. Let me show you. Here I have modified the sales portal sample application. I have added an attribute of the document type to the product order object. This attribute will hold the spreadsheet. In order to do this, I have selected Embedded Spreadsheet from the list of allowed extensions. Let's assume, purely for illustration purposes, that our spreadsheet calculates total price of all line items of the order and writes the result into the total price field of the order. I have added a new form section to the form of the order to show the spreadsheet and the total price. Let's run this application in the browser. So here I'm running the sales portal application. Let's go to the list of orders and select the fourth order from the top, which has quite a few line items. And then let's go to our Excel tab. If we click on the document, the spreadsheet widget is displayed. I have already added the spreadsheet to the order. Here I have used the list table start and list table end functions to mark the start and end of the table of line items. Note that we refer to values in the database using expressions enclosed in angular brackets, just like everywhere else in where I am. Now I can read the data from the database, and all the line items for this order will be populated from the data in the database. To do this, I click the Read Data button. I can now add a cell with the function that calculates the total. So here is the total. And now I can write this total back into the database. To do this, I define a mapping record that maps the value in this cell into the total price attribute of the order. 
And now when I click the Save Data button, the value is saved in the database. We can see it here. Version 8.1 also introduces some significant improvements to the Where I Am Report Designer. For example, you can now insert page break anywhere in the report. You can control text rotation. You can add borders to text and images. You can control transparency of the elements and you can space elements horizontally and vertically. There are quite a few other improvements as well. One feature I wanted to show you in more detail is the ability to add a table element to a report. A table element represents a list of related records that are shown as a table, for example a list of line item for a purchase order. In our case, I am using the issue resolution sample application where I have added a report that shows a staff member and issues allocated to the staff member. In the previous version, if we wanted to show a list of related records in a report, we had to create a sub-report. Sub-reports are still supported, but in version 8.1, many sub-reports can be substituted with table elements. So here I already have a skeleton of the report for a staff member that shows his name and job title. I have also added a table element that shows a list of allocated issues for the staff member. If we look at the properties of this element, we can see that I have defined a query that finds related issues. This is similar to what we do with subreports. Then I have defined columns that will be shown in the table. For each column, I have defined an attribute that the column will show specified label, column width, and alignment. This is very similar to defining columns for grids in queries. We can also specify border style, colors, background color, and so on. Let's run this report in the browser. So here I'm running the issue resolution application. We go to the staff member, which has some issues, and run the report. And I can see all the issues allocated to the staff member in the table here. Another important feature of version 8.1 is the ability to compare business space versions. This can be very useful if you want to see what exactly you or some other developer has changed. Let's for example check what we have changed in the issue resolution application when we added a report for the staff member. So I select the changed version, right click and select compare. Then I select the business space version to compare it with. I can now see the differences between versions. I can see that the document template has been added. This is our report. And I can also see that the form of the staff object has been changed. If I click on this button here, I can see exactly what has been changed in the XML descriptions of both forms. The differences are highlighted. So here I can see that the operation to show a report has been added to the form. Yet another new feature in version 8.1 is the ability to include calculated columns into standard queries. 
In the previous versions, if you wanted to display a column in query results that involved a calculation, you had to define an attribute of a business object and a rule that performs the calculation. In version 8.1, you can define a calculated column directly in the query. For example, in the issue resolution application, we have a query that shows open issues. It shows the subject of the issue, when it was opened, and when it is due. There is an attribute that stores the value of when the issue is due. This attribute is end time. But if the issue is always due, say, three days after it is opened, we could just define a dynamically calculated column for this. Let's do this. So we go to the query, and as you can see, it now di displays the end time attribute. Instead, we will define a calculation. I will call it due on and define a calculation using the date add function. So this dynamically calculated date will be three days after the start time. Let's now look at the results. So when we run this issue resolution application now and go to the query that shows open issues, we can see the due on column, which is always calculated as three days after the opened on column. So far, we have covered just a few new features of version 8.1, but there are many more. Like for example, the ability to add a calendar widget to a visual perspective, vertical column headers and grids, ability to enter dates using masks, ability to store picture attributes in a file system as well as in the database, ability to edit MS Office documents using Office Online, ability to execute a dynamic string of actions, and many others. For a full list of changes in version 8.1, please see the release notes located in the root directory of your AWARE IM installation.